Welcome, everyone. We've been looking forward to doing this session for literally weeks and months. I'm uh, joined by the MOOC team. So we have Leslie Breitner, Henry Mintzberg, Carlos Rueda. We're also joined by Deborah Hinton, who's one of your online facilitators. We also have with us Clelia, who's an online facilitator and course assistant, and Alex Megalis, who's heading up all of the facilitation team. Um, and we're also joined by a cat, uh, behind the scenes, uh, Frank, <laughs> doing <laughs> excellent camera work. And I would be remiss uh, without saying a special thanks to Carlos, who did all the logistics, heavy lifting for this to, to happen. Um, online, we're also joined by uh, Julie from Turkey. She's originally from the UK, but she's in Turkey at the moment. We have Salvador online, who's joining us from uh, Valencia, Spain. We have Cara from Vermont, US. She's joined us, and uh, she works on the same team with Zacharia, who's joining us from Afghanistan. And we hopefully will be joined by um, Kanuar in Iraq, in a refugee camp, momentarily. So thank you, everyone. We felt that this was important to bring the community together. Uh, uh, there are already um, 84 of us joined together in communion from around the world uh, for this live session. But we are taping it. So if you're watching this uh, later on at home, uh, you are also very, very welcome. So thank you so much. Um, I think what we really want to do with uh, this live session is to share our group experience and our group stories together. So um, we're going to actually pass the parole, turn the, uh, the mic over to uh, the people who are making this MOOC come alive, the participants and the learners, um, so that they can share their stories. So I will call upon uh, Julie um, first to maybe share uh, your group experience so far. OK. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. See some faces there. Uh, put uh, faces to names. Um, right, well, um, let me tell you a little bit about my project. Um, about a month ago, I was talking to some uh, teachers. I'm an English language teacher myself. And we were saying how um, you know, a lot of kids in camps are not engaged in any kind of activities. They're just sitting around. Uh, there's no kind of play area. There's no kind of singing of games, playing or anything. Um, so a few teachers contacted me and said, can we get some materials to those kids? Um, they were thinking about electronic materials. However, um, that plan kind of fell by the wayside because these camps don't have any facilities for, uh, you know, they don't have laptops, they don't have internet, whatever. So um, at the same time, Canivar got in touch with me um, on Facebook and he was actually in one of the camps in Iraq working with the kids and I asked him you know what's the situation with the kids what do they do all day how many kids are there and he said well you know they're just huddled in a tent uh, nobody really has time to engage with them because they're there are health workers in the camp the health workers are going around you know administering medicine whatever um, so you know it seems they've got food they've got shelter but they're not engaging in anything. So at that point I started a crowdfunding campaign um, to raise, you know, the aim of raising funds to start a kind of, well, a school but initially a kind of classroom area where the kids could meet um, and engage in some kind of um, It seems to be clicking. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah? Hello? Yes. We, we can hear you. We can hear you. You can hear me. It's making funny clicking noises. Yeah. Um, so uh, basically, by liaising with Canavar, um, we've been discussing, you know, what, how we could do this, how we could set up a school or initially a couple of classrooms. He's been very active. He went to the camp manager and talked about this. And it seems that the camp manager can give him um, use of his mobile caravan or mobile home or whatever it is uh, during the day. So um, this is how we started. So the plan is at the end of the crowdfunding project, which is there's about a week to go, um, that we will you know move ahead to plan what we actually need in terms of materials uh, and how we can actually um, put this plan into action and set up some kind of um, uh, play activities, lessons, um, 
Canova also said there were a couple of teachers in the camp that could probably do that. I understand they're quite young trainee teachers, so they'll obviously also need some support um, in setting up a program. But as I said, it's early days, we're just starting, it's quite exciting and um, I'm hoping that members of the Grooch team will be able to help with my project by opening it up maybe to other forms of social media. At the moment it's all based on Facebook. So that's where we are at the moment. Julie, that's extraordinary, the collaboration across the globe um, to help uh, children in a refugee camp um, and to help uh, Kanuar um, achieve his goals uh, in the camp. It's really a great, great, great story. We'll make sure to uh, to post um, the link to the crowdfunding campaign so that the group community can continue to make contributions to, uh, to this really important social initiative. Uh, we'd love to hear from Zakaria, who's in Afghanistan. Uh, Zakaria, can you hear me? And if you could tell us your group story. Uh, should I start now? Sure. Uh, okay, you know, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, say that I'm very happy and excited, you know, being a member of the panel. And I would like to thank you all, you know, for allowing me to be a member of this panel. Uh, 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 first of all, let me talk about the background of civil war in Afghanistan. Uh, we have been dealing with civil war. Uh, uh, since 1990, and it's still okay, uh, this war continues in Afghanistan. Uh, you may ha hear uh, the news about Afghanistan, you know, that we have had uh, war in Kunduz province uh, uh, some days ago. Uh, so this civil war has had a very, a, a very bad effect and very bad impact on our people. Uh, one of the problems that the civil war has caused is uh, discrimination and racial discord. Uh, I believe uh, and we all believe, our teammates, you know, that uh, discrimination has been a problem that uh, all Afghans should address. And uh, we believe that uh, because of this problem, uh, we have so many other problems. Uh, now, let me talk about the team. Uh, our group members are uh, from different ethnic groups. Now. Uh, just uh, let me go once back to the civil war. Now, the civil war in Afghanistan, you know, started in 1990, and it was not, you know, between the south and east or between the north and west. It was between the ethnic groups. Uh, you know, there are basically four major ethnic groups in Afghanistan: Pashtun, Tajiks, Uzbeks, and Hazaras. And uh, uh, the civil war caused a kind of, you know, gap between these uh, ethnic groups. Uh, now. We made a group to address this problem, to address discrimination in Afghanistan. Uh, our group is made of uh, made up of uh, four uh, young women, uh, Afghan women, and also four uh, Afghan men, uh, and also two Americans are uh, a member of our group who have had the experience of working with Afghans. Uh, one of them is Miss Janet. Uh, she has been in, in Afghanistan for around ten years. Now, uh, she has been helping Afghan youths uh, take scholarships, and also she has been an active member in American University of Afghanistan. Our next uh, group uh, member from America is Ms. Kara. She has been the inspiration behind all we have done. You know, she has inspired all the teammates. She has motivated all the teammates uh, to work energetically. Uh, so, uh, actually, we made this team when uh, I had a chat with uh, Ms. Cara uh, on Facebook and uh, then she talked about group and you know adx.org and this uh, course social learning for social impact and then I talked about the social problem that we have in Afghanistan this discrimination and then she just you know uh, asked me to join uh, that course and then we make a team so together you know uh, we invited other Afghans and uh, uh, we could build a team, actually. We tried to make the team as diverse as possible. So now, uh, in our team, you know, we have uh, young Afghan, uh, you know, people, right, uh, from different groups, from Pashtuns, from Hazaras, and from Tajiks. Uh, 
uh, I think you know Grook uh, has uh, helped us a lot. Now, without these, our ideas would be just ideas. Now, for example, uh, uh, we came uh, from uh, very different backgrounds, and uh, Grook helped us to be connected. I know the people who. Uh, I, I did not know before. You know, I have now Pashtun friends. I have uh, Tajik friends who are very friendly. You know, and uh, they all have the same idea as I have. They think that discrimination is a problem in Afghanistan that we should soon take care of it. And uh, uh, also, I think you know that Grook um, brought us the tools. You know, I have watched uh, videos. I have followed the two decisions. And uh, also my teammates, you know, did the same thing. And I think that uh, we have learned a lot of things. And uh, this opportunity, okay, and th these tools, you know, they have been brought by the group. Now there are a lot of Afghan youths, in, uh, you know, in Afghanistan who are very much interested to take part in solving the uh, social discords. You know, there are lots of social discords in Afghanistan, as you know, Afghanistan has you know, had had a very bad past, right? Uh, we have had ci civil war and then we have had Taliban. Uh, because of that, we have lots of social problems, social challenges. Now, I think, you know, a uh, group uh, can help, you know, Afghans, right? If, you know, in the future they make other teams, just like us, uh, to address other problems that we have in our society. And uh, that's our story. Zachariah, we are all uh, in the room collectively moved by um, what you're sharing and, and thrilled that you feel our group is providing a space for this kind of collaboration. Um, I know that you uh, have overcome logistical problems to be with us, and uh, it takes a fair bit of courage for all the members of your team to be collaborating under the circumstances, so we thank you. We also want to welcome all the newcomers. We are uh, over 100 uh, on uh, together uh, for this live session, so welcome. And we will, in a few minutes, um, have a chance to take questions uh, from you so that this is an interactive session. But we would like to invite Kara to maybe add a few words. You are one of the two American members of the team uh, that Zachariah just spoke of. So if you would chime in for a moment. OK, so um, I, yeah, I had signed up for the, the Social Partners for Social Impact course um, before Zachariah and I had had this discussion about the problem with discrimination in Afghanistan. And I guess I, I wasn't really clear how the course was going to work. So when we needed to join teams, I felt a, a little lost because I didn't really feel like my passions and skills and interests really matched well with the teams that had been formed. Um, so right about the same time that I was kind of feeling lost in the course, um, Zachariah and I had this conversation where he was telling me that, you know, this. The problem of discrimination in Afghanistan has been a deep concern since he finished high school. Um, so, you know, it, it felt kind of serendipitous that the conversation came up right at the same time that I was kind of feeling lost in the course. Um, and that was when I proposed that he, you know, join the course with me and that we, you know, we make this social initiative as our project and all, you know, learn together through through this online course, and then, you know, he knew some people that, that would be interested, and I knew some people, and then, we, and then those people introduced some people. So, you know, we've all met people that we never knew before, um, and all have, you know, some small connections, uh, you know, through other people that, that have brought us together. And the other American woman who joined us um, is someone that I've known since I started working with Afghan students in 2007. And, She's no longer in Afghanistan, and, and she had expressed to me a month or so ago that she really, you know, she missed working with young Afghans and asked me if I knew of any opportunities um, for her to get involved. So all of these things just kind of came together, and, and we've all, um, you know, joined, joined forces on group to satisfy all of our needs and to work on a really great cause. Rest of 
again. <laughs> Thank you very much, and good luck with the rest of the course. We are very excited to see uh, what is produced from your uh, your team. Uh, maybe I would ask Carlos to uh, share the instructions about how people can post questions as we are just going to hear from our last two panelists and before we open it up to a Q&A. Would you like to share how to do that? Yes, as you can see, uh, as you can see, we have Clelia and Alex here. Um, Frank, can you just turn it to them? Okay. <laughs> Hi, Clelia and Alex, right there. Um, um, they are both uh, either answering your questions or making notes on your questions. We're going to have a dinner between 15 to 20 minutes to react to your questions. So. You are probably watching. You're watching the live session on the edX platform, right? Just below it, there is a discussion. The discussion space. That's where you post your questions. That's where uh, Clelia and Alex are are interacting with you. Thanks, Carlos. So we will now invite Salvador from Valencia, Spain, who I believe is outdoors while his children are in the park. Hello. Hello, everybody there. And as you say, I am outdoors. Have a look. <laughs> Just taking care of, uh, of my children. Well, uh, the project we have here in Valencia, it's not my own project. It's a, problem, uh, a project I joined when uh, we saw in the, you know, we are here in Europe in a emergency, humanitarian emergency with the refugees coming from, from Syria. And uh, when we saw the TV, this uh, terrible image about the boy, Elan that was uh, lying on the beach and he died, a group of people here in Valencia uh, post an initiative in uh, Facebook. And uh, in less than 24 hours, we got uh, 8,000 8, uh, likes. You know, so everybody was uh, was amazing, was unbelievable. So finally, uh, you know, because to to push the like button is very easy. It's something that uh, doesn't uh, compromise you to to anything. We uh, prepare a first uh, meeting to see what was the real force we had. So we ask for a college to uh, rent us a place for a, a capacity of 500 people. And we went there, uh, the room was full, and then it was almost 300 people in the street that couldn't enter. So we were really surprised. And we start to, to work. What do we want to do? We want to prepare Valencia as a city refuge. You know, we want to be ready to welcome the refugees here in our town, to give them uh, on a dignity in their life, to give them a dignity in their stay here in Valencia. We want them to be ready to stay here if they want, to go back to their country if they want. We want to think about, the, uh, about them as human beings, not as, uh, as uh, money. You know, we're very ashamed about uh, the European uh, government, you know, because they are trying to avoid that these human beings enter in our territory, thinking about them as a problem. And we don't, we don't think they are a problem. We think they are human beings that give us the opportunity to show to the world that uh, another kind of living is possible, another kind of... of uh, of having a look to, to the world. This is more or less what uh, we are doing. Um, we are organized in uh, several commissions. We are almost 150 activists that uh, we are uh, working every day on, on this issue. We are organizing different commissions. I'm in the communi communication commission. But we have another one for the a logistic for treatment with the with the government with many uh, translations different commissions that they take of, of different uh, actions in, in, in each case and we have a committee a coordination committee who try to 
put in one way the work of all, uh, all of us. We were talking yesterday with Carlos about, about this, and one of the things we, we think is most important is to be able to make a big noise with this with this issue because uh, media are uh, are for they forgot they forgot the refugees they forgot the problem and people is for is forgotten and we, we cannot allow that we, we need to, to to be able to, to offer to to allow them to enter to our territory and to give them a, a life the life that they they deserve you know even as there is a let's say prohibition there, the, the, the Europe, Europe is trying to, to avoid the people to enter in our territory. We send a caravan of cars from here, from Alicante to Hungary to try to, you know, to bring some refugees here to, to Valencia. And uh, we know this is just a drop in the ocean, but it's just, we, we, we want to show the people that it can be made that we can offer, uh, we, need, we need to do that. We cannot stay with the, our arms, in, in, with the, our hands in the back. We need to, to do that. So it's a, we're a big group. And uh, in our team in the group, uh, we are just dealing with these uh, principles. We are thinking to design a way to give voice to the voiceless to help the people to don't forget such a situation. That's all, more or less. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that story. I mean, certainly in Canada, we are also um, considering ways that we can help uh, residents. I'm sure you're speaking on behalf of many, many people as you design your prototype, um, your to scaling efforts, so if you come up with a really good um, solution, you know, we can share that with the world and have more people engaged in the So thank you. Um, could you mute your mic, uh, Salvador, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, the last panelist we'll hear from is one of our online course facilitators, Deborah. if you would like to join us to share your story. Then we are going to hear from our uh, group co-design team and then open it up to questions. So again, you have an opportunity below the screen to post questions and we are very excited to engage with you. Deborah. Hi. Um, it's great to be here and it's especially great because I've had a chance to meet two people that are on a team that I co-facilitate, um, Zachariah and Kara, so that's been very special. Um, my social learning for social impact story started when I actually registered to take the course. And then I realized that they were looking for volunteers. And uh, so I thought, gosh, you know, what a better way to learn than to also facilitate. <laughs> and so I signed up and, um, and got got selected to be a volunteer. Um, and it's turned out to be so much more than what I actually anticipated, I have to say. I'm working with Luce, who um, some of you may know. Um, we're co-facilitating, so we divide uh, eight, right now we have eight teams and we share the facilitation. And it's actually been um, a fair amount of work, um, partly because we're all getting used to the the systems and, and, and all of that, but also because of the richness of the projects that you're putting forward deserve attention. Um, and we want to help you get the most impact that you can from the work that you're doing. The most exciting day for us so far was um, when the session to group charge got submitted. So I have to say that it it, it may be a big hurdle for you when you're doing your projects to submit these things, but we're like dying to see them, so please keep them coming. Um, we love when you're active. We worry when you're not. Um, uh, when we don't see any action, we're, try we're hoping that it's because you're on another platform doing what you're doing. Um, and, and the reason we care so much is because you can see just from the stories that we've heard today, these projects are very important. And even a little success will make a big difference. Um, we're totally inspired by the workaround some of the teams are coming up with to deal with the problems we've been having with the platform. 
I'm learning about new ways to chat in different platforms. There's something called Pirate Pad that if some of you t your teams are still having problems in conversation and Facebook's not working, you might want to try. So we've got teams that are two members and we've got teams uh, like the one from Afghanistan with nine members. And I have to say whether it's two or nine, when the teams are engaged, there's tremendous stuff coming from them and we get a lot of joy from seeing that the work that you're doing. Uh, the session right now with the visual images of your vision is fantastic. Um, and we're starting to see in our team some of the prototyping starting or discussions around the prototyping, which is also very inspiring. So we can't wait for session three to charge. And um, I just wanted to give you an idea of the range of topics that, that we have on our teams. We've got something about lear a learning tool on the restoration of dignity and life. We've got support for unemployed and another project that's support for the homeless. Um, we've got a, a project that's about um, re getting uh, reducing ocean trash, um, working with sex, sex trade wor workers to get them off the streets, and a healthy food project. So it's a vast array of projects that you're putting forward, um, all tremendously interesting and with potential for huge impact. So I just like to encourage you to keep going, and thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Um, I know that the emotion in your voice is coming from a place of conviction about these projects, which we all feel. So I would maybe now invite my colleagues to comment on some of the stories that we've just heard. I'm, I'm Scott. Hi, I'm Henry uh, Mintzberg, and uh, part of this gang or mob, as we sometimes are. Um, I, I, I'm amazed how energy can be harnessed around the world, um, and now it's kind of live, uh, which is quite stunning. Um, because I always talk a lot about networks being different from communities. That usually when we're on internet, we're a network. Uh, and networks are more to communicate, but communities are more to collaborate. And what we've got, thanks to the screen and thanks to the whole design of the MOOC, which we spend a lot of time uh, trying to figure out, we're, we're watching networks become communities. Um, there is so much going on in the world that is so discouraging. Um, and there's so many people who want to do something about it. And just to be able to offer some rather simple, maybe complicated in some ways, but rather simple frameworks or, or uh, you know, uh, mechanisms to get people together is, is absolutely wonderful. Um, a, a famous Canadian named Marshall McLuhan wrote about the global village. Uh, and I always thought, what kind of village is that? Because in a regular village, um, the heart of the village is is the local market and people get very energized in the local market. In the global village, the network is a ticker tape uh, that comes from the New York Stock Exchange and that's a very different, uh, that's a very different um, market. Um, and now we're seeing the global village, I think, coming to life in an interesting way. Just with the, where people are from in this room, uh, where people are from uh, that we've just seen on the screen. So I am super enthusiastic. It's wonderful. Um, just one last word. Uh, don't worry. I said it at the beginning. I'll say it again. Don't worry about all the formalities. Whatever it is, if you're going to succeed in the social initiative, you're going to find your way around all the forces that don't think you should be doing that, and that includes us who have to subscribe to certain procedures that may sometimes get in your way. So just go around them. The, the Brazilians say, break a branch. Just <laughs> fight your way through. <laughs> Thanks, Henry. Do you want to chime in, uh, Leslie? Sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Leslie Breitner, and I'm part of the group team. And I think what I've heard today and what I've seen online so far is just a thrill. I, I think this was our dream um, that the connections that you all have made and the distances between and among some of you who have connected and are now collaborating is something that we really did hope for and wasn't sure 
uh, would happen. So the the projects, the ones that I've been reading about online, the ones that I heard about today, the ones that many of you are working on who um, maybe are, are not as present as you might be, are just are, are important and I want to encourage the doing now. I want to encourage more contributions to the discussions online and I want to um, encourage the um, action on your part to the charges that Carlos is giving and to really get out there and do this, to start with a prototype, to, to try and not be afraid of failure, just try something. And if that something doesn't work, try something else and keep going at it. Keep the iterations going and um, don't be afraid to do. We talk about thinking, seeing, and doing, and all three are important. But really get out there and do something. And we're behind you and we're excited and we'll keep watching for what you're going to do. So thank you for, for being there and doing what you're doing. Uh, okay, so there are three words that are been coming to my my head and my heart uh, while listening to this session. Um, so, what is social learning for social impact? I'll summarize it in three words. One, connect. Just connect. Get out there. Connect wherever you can with as many people as you can in whatever levels, more deep, more shallow. You never know when a good connection is going to work or is going to take you to a new path or it's going to bring you a solution. Connect as, many, as much as you can. Second word, inspire. Right? Get inspired by those stories. Get inspired by the problem. Get inspired by, by these stories, of these amazing stories we're hearing. So getting more inspired is part of learning. That's how we see learning. Um, and the third word is act. Connect inspire, but also try it out. Act on something. Move. Give motion to the learning. And I think um, those three words, connect, inspire, and act, is what makes social learning for social impact a learning experience. So I'll leave you with, those, uh, with that thought. Even if the acronym spells CIA. Um. <laughs> 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 so what we are going to thank you, uh, co-designers, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the, um, the screen over to Clelia and Alex um, to ask some of your questions, and we will respond to them and engage in a little dialogue. Hi, so there's a question from Marinor on the group and the Metro We Have initiatives. Hello, I wonder how the group course can adapt to different levels of maturity of projects. I myself came with a vague project of discussing and exploring some ideas with my team. And as the course goes on, the project is getting a little bit more precise. But I see that other initiatives are much more advanced, already working on the field. I'd be concerning the pace of my initiative. Thank you. So I'll, I'll jump in here and respond and just say, Bravo for being there. Thank you for the question, and thank you, thank you for having an initiative, even if it's at an early stage. This group is for you. This group is for everyone, and you can learn by tuning into the discussion of the groups that may be more mature, and use this as an opportunity, as Carlos said, connect inspire and act and go as far as you can with yours because it will develop too. There's so much content in the videos, the deep dives and the other things that we've put in the course so just keep at it and please you have nothing to worry about that yours may not be as mature as others. Yeah, I, th I think it's a bit artificial to expect that in you know seven sessions over I don't know what it is, 10 or 12 or 14 weeks um, that things are going to unfold. It may happen occasionally. The nice thing is that the video material and the sessions are available anytime. So you could spread this over two years if you want to, depending on where you're at. And uh, I assume people can access uh, limited time. Um, uh, and some other people may come in with a semi-finished or almost finished project and yet 
they always remain vague. Our, our social initiative is this group itself. Um, and we're constantly learning and you know, you know we're seeing things that are happening today that maybe never quite happened like this before um, and uh, and uh, so it's always vague and we're always learning and we're always adapting and uh, so that's fine everybody's going to be at a different state but you know what even in each session or each deep dive you're going to pick out one or two little nuggets it's not necessarily going to be exactly where you at and you need that little nugget that little idea right then um, but you're going to pick out little things and say, gee, maybe we can do something differently based on that. So all we want to do is drop in thoughts and have you run with them wherever you are, beginning, middle, late stage, doesn't matter. I'm happy to hear what you do. Great. So we're going to turn it back over to Clelia to ask another question. But first, we'd like to also uh, welcome Tanya Michelle, who's one of the course online facilitators, who's joined us as well. Welcome. Hi, everyone. So Clelia, if you could speak loudly through our camera. Sure. Uh, another question by Tonatiu Garcia. Sorry if I missed up, like mispronounce it. I would like to ask all the panelists about the way they take decisions about actions of their social initiatives structured time, who is who is out of the discussions, and then what kind of partners have they tried to involve, like have you tried to involve within your initiative? You should take that. No, the, the panelists. The, pa the panelists? That's, right? that's no, us. the panelists. Oh, the panelists. The, panelists. the, panelists. the actual people <laughs> who are doing the project. <laughs> is there a panelist um, that would like to respond to this question? Raise your hand to show us who we can unmute. Okay, we okay, Salvador. Hi, I don't know if Kara or Zachariah would like to chime in. The question is, how does your group make decisions, in essence, right? Yeah. How do you how do you organize yourselves and make decisions? Would uh, Kara or Zachariah, if you sh show your hands, we'll know who to unmute. They're both unmuted. They're both unmuted. Okay, so Kara, you want to go first? Okay, so I don't think we've really reached that stage in the course yet where we've had decisions to make because. Um, at least Zacharia has done session three, but I think most of the rest of us have not done session three yet. And I think that's the session where we're really going to have to start making some decisions. But the way I visualize that happening is that it's going to start with just a brainstorming um, session. And we're all, because we haven't chosen our initiative yet. We know the issue we want to address, but we don't know how we're going to address it. Um, we have three Afghan students who are in Kyrgyzstan studying at a university together. Um, and then the other five Afghans are in Kabul. Uh, Janet and I are just going to kind of use background for support. So I, you know, I envision that maybe we're going to choose, um, you know, maybe, maybe several different smaller projects. Um, but I, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a team decision. And um, and it's going to come from you know some kind of a brainstorming session that we'll have in the near future. Great, Zachariah, would you like to uh, offer any remarks? Uh, uh, actually, you know, uh, I agree with Ms. Cara, right? You know, we are uh, still not in a stage of. Uh, uh, you know, we, we have not still, you know, we have not yet uh, designed a prototype. So uh, I think, you know, as Ms. Cora said, right, uh, we need brainstorming for, you know, making decisions. Definitely. And we need the ideas of all the teammates so that, you know, we can make a better decisions. 
Great. So we are hearing from people who are more advanced, less advanced, and that's okay. We are inclusive, and you take the pace that you need in order to do the work that uh, that this group um, provides space for. We're going to turn it over to another question. This time, Alex will ask um, uh, on behalf of one of you watching. I've got a question from Santiago who says, uh, "Hi, teachers. This is a great course. I really enjoy being here." Um, I'm thinking about social entrepreneurship and innovation, and it's more common to hear about this in the private sector, but what about the public sector? How can we innovate and apply our knowledge within the sector? Is it possible? You're unhappy to answer that. <laughs> I'm happy to answer that because I've worked with a lot of government people over the years, uh, especially in the Canadian government, and uh, uh, there is so much social, uh, or what's called public entrepreneurship, all kinds of initiatives, all kinds of fascinating things. <coughs> That come out of the uh, that come out of government, and and usually they're off in a corner and they're out of sight uh, of the of the government, depending on what the government is. Uh, the government we've been having, which is about to uh, leave, uh, because seventy percent of the population can't stand them, uh, has been uh, discouraging all kinds of initiatives. Uh, but the governments we've had historically, uh, there's always been lots of room. It depends on attitude towards government and so on. Wonderful, wonderful things. Just Get an idea and sell it. There's a there's a expression called skunk works, which is that you kind of find a corner where nobody can see you, and then you work on it till you get it to a point where you can announce it, and people say, "Oh, that's a brilliant idea," which they would have ex which they would have rejected uh, a year ago, uh, but now that you've done it, um, and, and just wonderful stuff going on. Years ago, when the Vietnam people were coming in boats instead of the uh, Syrians now, the government came up with an idea that, uh, you know what, uh, we can't do it, you have to do it, we'll pay half of whatever you do, uh, and you pay the other half, and you and all kinds of towns and groups and churches and everything were adopting Vietnamese people, and now they're wonderfully integrated into our country. So this is a lot of things that governments can do. So I'll, I'll just add, um, we're finalizing the uh, additional resources for session four on scaling, which is going to go live next Wednesday. And thanks to your question, you've made me think to add uh, an article on tri-sector athletes, so people who actually can uh, work across the three sectors, and something about social intrapreneurship, where um, individuals within organizations, both in the private sector and in the public sector, can drive innovation within their systems. So I'll make sure to post that thanks to your question. So we'll go to the next question. Uh, uh, Clelia, uh, if you don't mind asking. Sure. Uh, so we have a question from Ferry Salen from the Philippines um, asking, from when we say social initiative, we mean a prototype for a solid program for your advocacy. A lot of, group of my group members, especially the students, are a bit confused as to what will be the expectations after the course. Should we come out with a solid, solid prototype plan program or proposal after this course in December and what to do with it? And she shared concerns with a couple other people asking whether they had to have a social concrete initiative or just exchanging ideas online and helping different groups thinking about initiatives. This is called rolling in, rolling out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sort of repeating what I said before, but as far as you get on the prototype, we're going to be happy with. If it's not a complete program that's fully designed, that's okay. And when we get to our final session which in December, which will be the impact gallery, we want to see everything. We want to see even projects that are just in the first stages of development. So we have no expectations or priors that the projects have to be fully developed and ready to go, although there may be some that are. So as far as you can get, using the use the content in the course. Use the content, use the ability to connect, um, and, and do. But develop it as far as you can, given your experience, given your team, and given the content. Hmm? Just um, just a little, uh, a little idea. This course is not about what we want you to do. It's not about what we want you to do. It's about what you want to do. Yeah. 
right? So if the sessions, if the content, if the exercises, if the group charges help you, use them. If they don't, don't use them. So focus your action and your learning on where your team is at the moment. If, if having a prototype of a solar panel will be too much to have in, in a month and a half, then don't worry. Maybe just have a little idea, plan, or first test, um, or just a first conversation with your team. So it's not about what we want you to do. It's about what you want to do and what you can accomplish. Yes, of course. I, I, I just want to add something very briefly. Wonderful things don't happen on schedule. They never happen on schedule. Usually they take 10 times longer than you think. They, there's a, something called, what is it, Hofstetter's Law? It always takes longer than you think, even when you take into account Hofstetter's Law. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, uh, they can also gel, come together incredibly quickly. You could just be on the way to trying to figure out what you're doing. Next thing you know, bang, an idea comes in. And everybody says, yeah, yeah, we can run with that. Uh, and, and that's common, too. Thanks, Henry. We'll hear now from Alex with a question. So we, uh, we have um, uh, another question from a learner who says that they're, they're thinking a lot of Henry's discussion from, se uh, from session three. Uh, and it seems there a lot, there's a lot more seeing and doing with the initiatives that we learned about today. Uh, and that is not opposed to visioning or planning. And the learner says, my belief is that in social initiatives in general, it's more likely that initiatives are launched in response to a problem or need. And social entrepreneurs jump past the planning stage right into the doing and trying. Uh, he'd love to hear what the panelists, and Henry in particular, have to say about this. Uh, just just that I agree totally. <laughs> um, and I love the expression doing and trying. It's, it's about trying. It's largely about trying. It's about uh, let's just find a way to begin the process. Um, you get it, and I think this whole group is sort of about that in the sense that it kind of gives you a license to uh, to act. Um, now Salvador didn't need license to act; he'd been acting before this ever came to be. But it's kind of license to connect. Suddenly, I'm not just on my own. I'm part of a whole group that's going that's trying to do things all over the world. And uh, I love the doing and trying. It's all about trying. Um, so Patricio is asking about uh, the possibility of integrating corporate social responsibility instead of uh, really creating the new own social initiative. I think you mentioned it a little earlier, but could you maybe expand on how they could use this course within their bigger company or being a social entrepreneur and how to completely go forward with that? And who's that addressed to anybody special? Uh, sorry? Addressed to anybody special? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anita should comment on that. Sure. So we intentionally put a cap on registration uh, as today uh, so that um, people who are already working on their social initiative are not midway um, introduced to new people who have a lot of catch up to do. And that was a diff difficult decision to make, but one that we made um, because we wanted to honor the work that was happening within the teams. Uh, today is the last day to register, so I guess our feedback would be if you are working within an organization, private sector or public sector, and you are participating in this MOOC, maybe you want to encourage your colleagues to join today and join your, uh, make, create a new team based on an issue that you care about within your organization or have them join another group that's already formed and learn. They can catch up very quickly and uh, participate for the remainder of the course. So uh, that would be our first bit of feedback is have um, members of your, your staff, team, colleagues at the office uh, work together and experience what it's like to do social learning for social impact um, and engage and uh, with never knowing what might happen uh, and that sky is the limit. Clelia, we have another question or Alex? So, uh, another question from Caroline. Uh, Caroline says, I think it's more easy to form a community in very tangible goals, education, to help refugees, health, but it's a lot more difficult if you want to promote civil rights and human rights. 
What recommendations or experiences have you had in Idris? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, I think maybe just my, my two cents on this issue would be that um, to look at the core causes of the inequalities that we seek to address uh, is always a, a, a worthwhile exercise. Whether that then moves us into a position of developing services or, uh, or to engage in advocacy building, um, then uh, is, 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 another, is another reflection entirely. But at least we've engaged in that reflection process that should really drive the creation of work. That would be my, my two cents. You know, it, 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 it's kind of interesting because um, the, the basic point, I think, is fair. But let me talk about some very dramatic exceptions. The American Revolution was about civil rights, and it was about colonialism and so on. Um, and it changed the world. Um, so, and, and certainly it was community driven in a sense. The assault march in India that Gandhi led, sorry, Mahatma Gandhi led, it was similar, I think, in some respects. Um, on the other hand, what happened in Tahrir Square uh, was dramatic and wonderful when it happened, then discouraging where it is now. But that's not over, that's not finished. It's going to come back. And, and if people, uh, Keep doing it; it will it will change the world too in Egypt, as well as as well as other places. So, so yeah, it's harder to get get going on something like uh, like civil rights compared to health uh, or education. Um, but it happens, and when it happens, it's really important. My feeling about the MOOC is if we help drive or help encourage one major initiative like a shift in a country, a kind of a grooming bank kind of idea, uh, with all the So our last question, and then we're going to wrap up uh, and hear from our, our co-creators one more time. Uh, so, okay, the description is a little long, but it's um, a precise question from, um, I'm sorry for the name, Ferry Selen from the Philippines. So she's saying um, that she's from the Philippines and she's going to pitch her prototype to real NGO tackling sexual exploitation, trafficking, and violence. Her team is virtual and global, so she doesn't know um, what the other girls will do with the prototype that they're building together, but she's leaning as to how they will use the prototype, and her question is, should, what should they do as a team um, of the prototype that they're building together if they're in different places and using it differently? So should it be a group decision? What should the best set be with building this prototype together while being in different places and implementing it differently? Oh, <laughs> So I'll just uh, address very quickly. Um, as a team, I think it's great that the team is from different geographic locations. And I would approach it by looking at what are the commonalities in the problem among those various locations, and then what are the differences. And try to build perhaps a prototype that addresses in general what's common, and then to adapt the prototype for each of the individual locations. And I'll just build on what Leslie was saying about adapting. I mean, one of the core concepts of human-centered design and design thinking is that it's context-based. And so if you have members that are coming from different localities, the idea of testing different kinds of prototypes in different contexts will actually enrich the experience of the group as a whole. And it doesn't mean that the same prototype actually should be deployed in different contexts, because that actually doesn't make sense. One of the core issues is to, to listen um, to on the ground, the users and the beneficiaries of a social initiative and a social intervention, and to adapt a prototype according to what you're hearing on the ground. So I think it's an excellent question, and I think that the strength will actually come from the, the different ways that um, this uh, problem will be approached through design thinking. So good luck with that, and we look forward to hearing uh, what your experience is about. Yeah. So that. Oh. Yeah, just to say the same thing a little differently, it's doing and trying and sharing and learning. Um, and the more experiments, the more trying in more places, 
the more those are shared, the more people can say, gee, we could do that too, uh, the better. So maybe what we'll do is we'll hear from uh, members in the room and the panelists that are still um, with us. We'll start with Clella. Do you have any comments or thoughts um, as we say goodbye? Uh, I just want to say it's really inspiring to read all your comments online, even the questions. And thank you for the post. I just read the post from Liliana saying that she's really inspired and uh, by this whole course. And it's really heartwarming to see all these people that are willing to change something. And they might not know what what to do with that, but just as Henry said uh, about your colleague asking what to do and what do we do from now, and I think a lot of you are taking steps now, which is really inspiring, and even your questions and your answers and reactions to us, like why do we not act and what's blocking you, I could uh, recognize myself in a lot of your comments, so that really helps to move forward and feel that we're not alone in this, so this community is really inspiring. Move forward. Thank you very much for your participation. Just maybe my, uh, my, my, my first thought would be that when we started to work on this project, I was expecting that primarily the participants would be organizationally bound. Folks would come in with clearly defined projects and an infrastructure to support them. And that really hasn't been the case. We've had uh, primarily, uh, uh, the, the participants have primarily been individuals who brought in their passion uh, and their care and their and their willingness to act, but to also build something. Um, and it's been really, really interesting to see that the reflections have been grounded not just in actions uh, and that will to act, but in, and also in essentially building infrastructure. And so when we talk about how do we apply things on the ground, uh, there's, there's that, that, that necessity to move towards network building. That's, that's immensely fascinating. Um. Because you can't. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Um, I guess my, my last words would be, there's no project too big or too small, no project too developed or not yet born. Anything goes. This group is for all of you. And just keep at it. And when you get to the final week, no matter where you are and your initiative, even if it's just being born, please share it with us. You're rolling. You're rolling. <laughs> That's it. That's <laughs> enough. Okay. Um, um, try to. All of you are working in teams. Most of you are working in teams. Um, some team members are more active. Some team members are not that active. You're, if you're probably watching this, is because you're one of the active ones. So be inclusive. Um, be patient and be inclusive. If some of your team members are not yet on board or they're not that active as you are, don't worry too much about it. Just keep going forward. You just need, you just need one more person or just like your facilitator to listen to you to keep going forward. Um, go at your pace, um, and uh, we're here to help. Uh, we're here to help. Your facilitator is there to help. We're here to help. There's a, as you can see, there's a lot of people um, helping you in this book. And just a quick logistical note, this session is going to be recorded. So you can come back to it and watch it in the same space where you're watching it right now. Right. Um, first, I want to say hi to Ferry Celine. Um, great to know that you're on the line. And I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what you do as a team globally and also your plans for the Philippines. Um, and I just want to encourage everybody to keep going one little step at a time and uh, see what's coming next. So maybe what we'll do is we'll hear from Kara uh, for any closing remarks. I guess I just I wanted to address uh, one of the questions that came up about um, people who have an interest in uh, human rights or civil rights issues. Because I guess I kind of feel like that's, that's sort of what, what we're going to be addressing. And um, you know, I think there's a value to addressing those issues just within, you know, within the public, within the community. I mean, we're, I, I don't think that we're going to be looking for making policy influences or approaching the government about this problem. I think we're just going to be trying to raise awareness and increase sensitivity, and and let you know let the members of all these ethnic groups know that you know everybody's not happy with with this discord in the country. Um, and and then you know then you know a bigger movement can, can grow from that that could affect policy and other things. 
<laughs> so now maybe we could hear a couple of uh, closing statements from Zachary in Afghanistan. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, I would like to thank all of you, you know, for uh, making this great course. Uh, I think uh, this this course is really amazing, especially for Afghan youths, uh, you know, just like me. Uh, in Afghanistan, as I told you, we have lots of social problems, you know, and you know we need to address all of them. Uh, as you know, we have addressed uh, discrimination. Just you know, Afghan youths, I think, need uh, uh, encouragement, inspiration, and motivation. That's what you're doing now, and uh, I just want you to uh, keep it up. You know, you know, encourage more, inspire more, and motivate more. That's you know, that's what you have to do. Uh, I have been motivated, I have been encouraged and inspired by your uh, you know, videos and decisions. Thank you very much. This is a final thought from my side. Um, we who are working behind the scenes to create a platform for the group to actually happen care so much about your experience and so we are very open to your feedback at all stages of this group to course correct as we go. Henry has taught us all about emergent strategy and we are trying to live up to that um, and also for future group experiences. The other thing I would say is we've been over a hundred people watching the live session together and we've shared this experience together. Others will watch it at a different time um, but we are all part of this group community and um, we can continue to create linkages together across all the divides that separate us, that pretend to separate us um, by staying connected, we do not have to stay within our teams. We can share resources with one another, and that's what we hope the Impact Gallery will allow us to do: is to see what um, each other has worked on. And this is just the beginning of a global conversation around the kind of change that we all want to see. So, thank you on behalf of the group team. Thank you, uh, Frank, for doing all of the logistics. Thank you, Carlos, for organizing this. Thanks to everybody in the room, our panelists who were able to join us, and for all of you who watched. Uh, we really. Really appreciate the engagement. Good luck, and we look forward to ongoing conversation. Bye. <laughs> Turn to Frank. Turn to Frank. <laughs> hey, Frank. Bye for now. I'm clicking stop broadcast. See you next time. Yeah, good job. See you.